Hello, my name is Audrey Scanlon. I'm the Bishop of the Episcopal Diocese of Central Pennsylvania, and it's great to be with you today. Merry Christmas to all of you. We are so happy to be able to offer these liturgies for the two Sundays in Christmas. I'm delighted that you have joined us. The first Sunday, of course, the first Sunday of Christmas, hear that beautiful, beautiful lesson from the prologue of John reminding us that in Jesus' birth, the Word became flesh and dwelt among us. And then in the second Sunday of Christmas, we continue the journey with the Holy Family after they leave the stable in Bethlehem. And so we are very glad to have you with us to continue our Christmas celebration. I'd like to pray for you, with you, a Christmas prayer. Son of Mary, Son of God, may we, for whom the heavens have opened, never lose that heavenly vision. May we, who like the shepherds, have seen in your birth a new kind of love, witness to that love in our lives. Welcome, welcome Jesus Christ, our infant Savior, baby, who makes every birth holy. May we, who like the shepherds, have witnessed in the stable a new kind of love, return to our work with joy. May we, for whom the heavens have opened to proclaim that God is with us, we who have fed on living bread and drunk the wine of heaven, go out to be instruments of your peace day by day. Father of all, the child born for us is the savior of the world. May he who made us your children welcome us into your kingdom where he is alive and reigns with you now and forever. Amen. So friends, every good blessing in this Christmas tide. Amen.
Thank you so much, Dan. What a beautiful way to gather for worship. Friends, I'm Chris Streeter, Canon for Mission Development and Innovation here in the Diocese of Central Pennsylvania. Glad to welcome you to my home today, the first Sunday of Christmas. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And blessed be God's kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you, all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, you have poured upon us the new light of your incarnate word. Grant that this light, enkindled in our hearts, may show forth in our lives. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. God of wisdom and love, in whom we find our joy, Help us to listen for your word and discern your way forward for our church. Give us the insight to hold on to what is true, the courage to explore new ideas, and the boldness to create with you. Let us be shaped by faith for your mission. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Let us hear together words of Holy Scripture. A reading from Isaiah. I will greatly rejoice in the Lord. My whole being shall exalt in my God. For he has clothed me with the garments of salvation. He has covered me with the robe of righteousness. As a bridegroom decks himself with a garland, and as a bride adorns herself with jewels. For as the earth brings forth its shoots, and as a garden causes what is sown in it to spring up, so the Lord God will cause righteousness and praise to spring up before all the nations. For Zion's sake, I shall not keep silent. And for Jerusalem's sake, I will not rest until her vindication shines out like the dawn and her salvation like a burning torch. The nations shall see your vindication and all the kings your glory. And you shall be called by a new name that the mouth of the Lord will give. You shall be a crown of beauty in the hand of the Lord and a royal diadem in the hand of your God. The psalm appointed for today is Psalm 147, verses 13 through 21. Worship the Lord, O Jerusalem. Praise your God, O Zion. For he has strengthened the bars of your gates. He has blessed your children within you. He has established peace on your borders. He satisfies you with the finest wheat. He sends out his command to the earth, and his word runs very swiftly. He gives snow like wool. He scatters hoarfrost like ashes. He scatters his hail like breadcrumbs. Who can stand against his cold? He sends forth his word and melts them. He blows with his wind and the waters flow. He declares his word to Jacob, his statutes and his judgments to Israel. He has not done so to any other nation. To them, he has not revealed his judgments. Alleluia. A reading from Galatians. Now before faith came, we were imprisoned and guarded under the law until faith would be revealed. Therefore, the law was our disciplinarian until Christ came so that we might be justified by faith. But now that faith has come, we are no longer subject to a disciplinarian. But when the fullness of time had come, God sent his son, born of a woman, born under the law, in order to redeem those who were under the law so that we might receive adoption as children. And because you are children, God has sent the spirit of his son into our hearts, crying, Abba, Father, so that you are no longer a slave, but a child. And if a child, then also an heir through God.
reading from the Gospel of John. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things came into being through him, and without him not one thing came into being. What has come into being in him was life, and the life was the light of all people. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not overcome it. There was a man sent from God, whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify to the light, so that all might believe through him. He himself was not the light, but he came to testify to the light, the true light which enlightens everyone, was coming into the world. He was in the world, and the world came into being through him. Yet the world did not know him. He came to what was his own, and his own people did not accept him. But to all who received him, who believed in his name, he gave power to become children of God who were born not of blood or of the will of the flesh or of the will of man, but of God. And the word became flesh and lived among us. And we have seen his glory, the glory as of a father's only son, full of grace and truth. John testified to him and cried out, This was he of whom I said, He who comes after me ranks ahead of me, because he was before me. From his fullness we have all received grace upon grace. The law indeed was given through Moses. Grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. No one has ever seen God. It is God, the only Son, who is close to the Father's heart, who has made him know. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. In the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Well, Merry Christmas, friends. Merry Christmas to you on this first Sunday, this third of the 12-day season of Christmas, this season when we're invited to reflect on the central sacred story of Jesus' birth. It's a story we know. It's a story we love. It's a story that brings comfort. It's like a warm blanket. It's a story that many of us have heard time and time again over the years that we ourselves have had a hand in telling. It's so central to our sense of identity that even the ways that we prepare ourselves for the telling of this story, those preparations are steeped for us in tradition, in emotion. I mean, for how many of us, if you'd asked us a year ago, hey, any, any kind of room for negotiation in how it is we're going to do Christmas in 2020 a year ago, hard slam, right? No, 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 no. I got Christmas figured out. My family and I know how it is we do Christmas. Thank you very much. My church knows how to do Christmas. We got this just fine. 2020 has been a year of unprecedented. And can you believe that we used to use the word unprecedented before 2020? <laughs> this has been a year of unprecedented shifts in even something as central and core to our faith identity as how it is we celebrate Christmas. Wonder if like 
me, you've wrestled a bit with how it is we engage this familiar story in such unfamiliar times. I don't wanna suggest if you hear nothing else this morning, I wanna suggest to myself and to each of you that if our primary draw to this story is its sense of familiarity, is the comfort that it brings to us, well then friends, maybe there is opportunity in this unprecedented Christmas season to be reminded of just how unexpected, uncertain, unstable this story was and is. This is a story of two young parents who find themselves in an unprecedented place in their lives, a place they had never been to before, a place they had no intention of going to, and yet here they are. And we're told that each of them perceives unexpectedly that this curveball in their lives is of God. And on this particular Sunday every year, the first Sunday of Christmas, we are invited to look at this story through the lens, not of the familiar narrative from Matthew and Luke, but from John's telling of this story. John, who hearkens all the way back to the opening of our scripture, reminding us that in the beginning, in that time when the earth was a formless void, when darkness and chaos were the sum of creation, that in that place, God spoke. And with the seemingly simple words, let there be light, those words, that light enters creation. And from that moment on, the seeming stability and certainness of darkness, the darkness that encompassed everything, that known entity was forever shifted. From that point on, creation would never again know a time without light. John asks us to hold that central image of creation against this birth narrative, that the word through the incarnation of Jesus takes flesh, becomes flesh and blood and now dwells with us. Talk about an unprecedented unexpected event. The author J.R.R. Tolkien in a collection of essays talks about the incarnation of Jesus and he uses a particular word to talk about this event in human history. He uses the word you catastrophe E-U catastrophe. So E-U, like in our word, Eucharist, meaning good or great Thanksgiving, he uses the word you catastrophe, a good or a great catastrophe. He says that humanity was on a course from which there didn't seem to be a way out. We as a people were spiraling until this good, this great catastrophe that is the incarnation 
entered the world. We mark our history by everything that came before that event, B-E-U-C, B, before you catastrophe, and everything now that's come after. That's the story that we are invited to reflect upon and embrace this season. What it is to be a people who turn to this great, unprecedented, unexpected catastrophe. And in it, we see the hand and the work of God. Perhaps like me, you have been heartened, and I'm, I'm filming this uh, about a week ahead of time, but perhaps you've been heartened to, to hear news of the COVID-19 vaccine rolling out. Jenny and I have received news that friends of ours in Rochester who work at the area hospital where our children were born uh, have been given the vaccine. I received news the other day that my mother who works at a local hospital in North Jersey has received the vaccine. It is coming and there is hope, there is light at the end of this pandemic tunnel for us. What joyful news to receive in the days leading up to Christmas. But I offer in closing one caution it seems to me for us as faithful followers of Jesus. The administering, the distributing, the manufacturing of the COVID-19 vaccine, as joyful and as wonderful as that is, that is not the you catastrophe that we celebrate this season. I'm sure like me, when, when talk of the vaccine comes up, the light at the end of the tunnel is that finally, finally we can return to normal. We can go back to the way things were. We can start doing things the way we did in 2019 and 2018. That's the joy, that's the hope that this vaccine brings. And I say amen to that. It is a joy and it is a hope that I share. But friends, today on the first Sunday of Christmas, when we look at the incarnation, the incarnation doesn't invite us to return to the way things used to be. The incarnation doesn't say, hey, let's go and do things the way we did it in 2019 or 2018 or before. At the core of our celebration of this sacred season is our recognition that everything has changed, that we cannot go back to the way things used to be, that the world will never again know a place where God has not become flesh and blood and lived among us and taught us how it is God wills and dreams for us to serve God's mission in this world. How will you and I respond to that good, that great catastrophe of God becoming flesh and blood in this world? Merry Christmas. Thanks be to God. Amen. The prayers for today are form two. I ask your prayers for God's people throughout the world, for our Bishop Audrey, for this gathering, and for all ministers and people. Pray for the church. I ask your prayers for peace, for goodwill among nations, and for the well being of all people. Pray for justice and peace. I ask your prayers for the poor, the sick, the hungry, the oppressed, and those in prison. 
Pray for those in any need or trouble. I ask your prayers for all who seek God or a deeper knowledge of him. Pray that they may find and be found by him. I ask your prayers for the departed. Pray for those who have died. Praise God for those in every generation in whom Christ has been honored, whom we remember today. Pray that we may have grace to glorify Christ in our own day. Let us join together now in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Thank you for welcoming us into your home this morning. Thank you for worshiping with us on this holy day. I'd like to close us with a Christmas prayer written by Robert Louis Stevenson and a Christmas blessing. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Loving Father, help us remember the birth of Jesus 
that we may share in the songs of the angels, the gladness of the shepherds, and the worship of the magi. Close the door of hate and open the door of love all over the world. Let kindness come with every gift and good desires with every greeting. Deliver us from evil by the blessing which Christ brings and teach us to be merry with clear hearts. May the Christmas morning make us happy to be your children and Christmas evening bring us to our beds with grateful thoughts, forgiving and forgiven, all for Jesus' sake. Amen. And now may the humility of the shepherds, the joy of the angels, and the peace of the Christ child be God's gifts to you and to people everywhere this Christmas tide, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you this day and remain with you always. Amen. Let us go forth into the world rejoicing in the power of the Spirit. Thanks be to God.